The goys are back in town, goys are back in town. The goys are back in town. Sorry, I still got that song stuck in my head. Thanks, Varg. Anyway, hello, my friends. <sighs> Crazy weather have, we're having here in Chicago lately. It was uh, just a couple of days ago that we were having sub-zero Fahrenheit temperatures, which for you uh, Europeans and others who use Celsius, that's uh, very cold, very cold. Uh, but now, in just, I think, three or four days, the temperature has risen up to 60 degrees. It's unreal. I've never uh, experienced this drastic of a, you know, temperature shift in, in such a short period of time. It's very strange. And so right now, it's like 55. It's about 4 o'clock. I'm on, uh, quarter to 4, I'm on my way to work. By 8 o'clock, when I get off work tonight, in just four hours, it will be 30 degrees. So almost a 30 degree drop in just four hours. It's all, This just doesn't make any sense to me. But that's not what this video is about. That is just a tangent from the start, so we're starting off good. But today, I want to talk about just an idea that I had when I was watching my dog play fetch. I was, I was, uh, so just adjusting my camera here. I was watching my dog play fetch, or I was playing fetch with my dog, actually. I should say. And when I throw the toy, the squeaky toy, for my dog to run for, my dog doesn't just, it's a miniature schnauzer, by the way. And I think they were bred to uh, catch rats. And so when I throw this squeaky toy, it doesn't just run and pick up the toy with its mouth and run back with it. As it's running to the toy, it does this thing with its paws. And by the way, everyone who comments, put your hands on the wheel. They're going to hate me for this, but it goes like this, right? And I, I do want to address that real quick. I'm driving on residential side streets, going at like 25 miles an hour, uh, and they're entirely straightaway streets. And I've been, I've lived here my whole life. I mean, I know I could drive these roads with my eyes closed, so I'm not worried. You guys should stop being worried. Anyway, back to the original, back to the main topic here. This video is all over the place. I just I just drank a Red Bull, by the way, which might have something to do with that. Uh, so, when I throw the toy, it doesn't just run and pick it up with its mouth. It does this thing with its paws, which is totally useless and unnecessary, where it, like, st stomps on it. And it'll even, like, pounce on the uh, squeaky toy. And... Uh, you know, I think the dog is smart enough to notice that the squeaky toy is not running away from it and there's no real use in uh, pouncing on it or like going for it with the paws. But that sort of action is instinctual. It's like leftover uh, a vestigial sort of uh, reflex where they used to have to do that to catch the rats, I think. They used to use their paws a lot, and so you could quickly hold the, the rat down with your paw and go for it. It's better than just going for it with your mouth. You might miss or whatever. So I think that is where that sort of action comes from. And, it, I mean, my dog does other things, too, like that, where it'll be, it'll nose the food bowl around the kitchen. It'll just use its nose and, like, push push the food bowl around the kitchen I think that also comes from like foraging instincts or something so I started wondering if us people have similar sort of um, 
simulacrum or uh, representations of past behavior that come out instinctually. Because, you know, I mean, playing fetch is sort of like a simulacrum of uh, the act of hunting itself. So I was, and by the way, I use the term simulacrum because, not just because it's one of those, you know, uh, 50 cent words, <laughs> but because it means something in particular, which is distinct from simulation. And I think it's an important distinction. Uh, a simulation is something which is meant to reveal the underlying mechanisms, something which is meant to show uh, each of the parts of whatever phenomenon we're simulating and how they work together, how it actually works. Whereas a simulacrum is sort of a, an esoteric representation of something where it, it, in a way, you know, represents like a simulation does, but it doesn't it's not meant to reveal the underlying mechanisms. It's not meant to reveal what's actually going on. It's kind of like esoteric in a way. And so I think uh, something like protests and rallies are, for human beings, a simulacrum of battles and revolts. And it's uh, a declawed, defanged, um, sort of vestigial reflex of ours. Because why do we have protests and rallies? Protests and rallies are meant to be responses to some kind of perceived injustice. Um, we don't protest things that we just don't like. You know, I don't, I don't like a lot of things, but I wouldn't go out and protest them. I would only go out and actually protest or think to protest something that I thought was truly an injustice, something that I thought was, um, I guess, in the uh, absolute moral sense, evil. I wouldn't go just protest something that I thought was just, you know, something I didn't like. It has to be, there has to be some kind of moral component to it, where something is wrong and it needs to be fixed. It must be fixed. And so, the protest sort of is a reflection in a very muddy and, um, indirect way of what people used to do when they experienced some direct injustice or evil done against them. And that was to actually get together into these groups of people, get together into a big mob, or in a more organized sense, get together into an army and uh, literally attack those who are uh, committing the injustice. And this isn't, when I talk about like a vestigial reflex or whatever, this isn't something that we did just hundreds of thousands of years ago or tens of thousands of years ago. This is something that was still happening somewhat regularly, even up in the Middle Ages. There were peasant revolts all over Europe during the Middle Ages, and especially before these areas were Christianized, indoctrinated, which, by the way, was the, like, official, uh, I think, like, Latin word for bringing up someone as Christian. It was, that was called indoctrination. Now we see that word as a very negative term, but before that was just, oh, yeah, we're going to indoctrinate these kids. So before Europe was brainwashed into Christian uh, meekness, when people got together into a big crowd, they weren't just going to yell 
signs things or hold up signs. They were going to actually accomplish something by means of force. So I think that when, when we get together and protest, we're sort of uh, manifesting that sort of uh, instinct. So, so we're kind of like, if you're going to a protest, we're kind of like dogs playing fetch instead of hunting. So, but then there's other examples I was thinking of, which uh, I think a lot of you guys watching may not know about or appreciate, but if you've been keeping up with, like, the VR chat memes, the uh, virtual reality chat memes, the Ugandan Knuckles meme, I think that this is, like, <laughs> the, uh one of the most esoteric nationalist memes that have ever existed. <laughs> and it's already become, it's already been labeled racist and problematic and all this. By uh, mainstream gaming journals and magazines and shit. But essentially what it is, if you don't know about it, is uh, a bunch of people in this virtual reality world choose this really dopey looking avatar that looks like, um, like a retarded echidna. And they run around looking for their queen, asking people to show them the way you don't know the way. Yes, I do. do you know the way? I know the way. You have to have Ebola to know the way. I have Ebola. It doesn't know the way. To know the way, to know the you way, need to have, have Ebola. Ebola. This is my new habit. This is very good I habit. This is, oh, yeah, okay. this is my new This is my new method. This is my new home. To run. We need to drink. You don't know the way of the red Ebola or the blue Ebola. <laughs> do you want me to drink your blood? <laughs> we are protected by the devil's power. Okay. In Zimbabwe, we do not have water. Okay. So okay. we drink child blood. Oh, we need to action this we, need, we need to invade a new country. Let us conquer the child blood. Action And they all talk like they're Ugandans. They talk with the sex and they say, Do you know the way? I will show you the way. Do you know the way of the devil? Where is the queen? Show me the queen. Spit on the fake queen. So <laughs> If you don't know anything about what I'm talking about, I think I look like a idiot right now, but I think that this meme is being called racist and problematic and all this because it is sort of a, in a dog playing fetch way. It's a representation of nationalistic instincts. It's a group of people. They all talk in the same way. They all... They want to find the way. They want to know the way. So there's uh, one goal for their tribe that they're working toward. And they're doing it for their queen. So they all follow one hierarchical leadership structure. It's all very anti-egalitarian in that way. And when they find someone who is a, a fake queen, who is not their real queen, they spit on them. So they attack those who um, are outside of the tribe, they defend their tribesmen, they call each other Buddhas. Hello, my Buddhas. Show me the way, my Buddha. So, they do all of that, and uh, it gets, it's gotten these gaming magazines pissed off because it's clearly uh, an occult nationalist meme. So, yeah. Th this has been a strange video. Rambled in all directions. I hope you enjoyed it anyway. I don't think I'm going to be drinking big Red Bulls before uh, I make videos anymore because I just end up going a little crazy. But thank you for watching. <laughs>